Welcome to Brockton Community Access's coverage of Election 2015. Today in studio we have the two candidates for Ward 5 City Council, the seat being vacated by Dennis DiNapoli who served for a number of years. Um, we're going to go in ballot order for the opening statement and then we'll reverse it for the closing statement. So we're going to give Ann Beauregard, a candidate for City Council in Ward 5, a minute to do her opening statement. Ann. Hi, I'm Ian Beauregard, and I'm running for Ward 5 City Council. I can be reached at 508-584-6919 or tranquillitytreasurer at yahoo.com. I believe that I should be your next Ward 5 City Councilor because my extensive experience and education uh, that include both accounting and uh, government taxation and also my years of experience with this community. Um, I also have a degree in Women in Politics and Public Policy where I spent a great deal of time at the State House where people realize that a lot of our money comes from the state. Not all of it, because you know about the tax part and that's, that's uh, where I have a phenomenal understanding also. And I believe that my extensive amount of experience in the community has, would be how advantageous to those that I hope to serve whether it be grant writing over the years, uh, being part of several boards that include uh, the Community Schools Advisory Board and the Adult Learning Center Advisory Board. Education is a large part of the city's budget and that's something I truly understand and I'm supposed to wind down here but I also have a serious understanding of the uh, business world and because I was a part of it and also because I've been a part of many uh, businesses and many organizations that are part of uh, the business community. Thank you. Ollie, you got a minute 20. Hello, Mark. I'd like to thank you for inviting me today and fellow Brotonians out there. The reason why I'm running for Ward 5 City Council, I believe I have the integrity that can hold the job. Um, I've been in Brockton all my life. I've been volunteering since I was the age of 14, growing up in um, Hill Street and Stoneman Ave. Um, met President Clinton in 2000, 1993 at the White House. I received a 1,000 point of light award with our positive posse. So volunteering, Brockton, it's all in my DNA. And on no November 3rd, I'm asking you to vote for me, Ollie J. Spears, for your next Ward 5 City Councilor. Thank you, Ollie. Um, my first question is going to be, you both got into a little bit of your qualifications during your one-minute opening statement, and uh, we're, we're going to allow you to elaborate a little bit more. I'm going to start with Ollie first about your unique qualifications yes. to be City Councilor in Ward 5. Well, I, I've been in the financial industry since 1997. I'm a mortgage loan officer. I work for several banks. Um, I believe that I, could re you know, I, I know how to read a budget. Um, I could work across the aisle, I could work with people. Um, I don't believe in taking sides, I believe in working with everybody. So I think my, you know, my attitude, um, my charisma, I think I could be able to push the Brockton agenda forward with anybody, with any mayor, with any city councilor. Okay. Um, Ann, you have a minute. Okay, well, you want to go back to experience. I've been writing grants for organizations for the city of Brockton for over 12 years now. Oh, they're not large grants, but I have enormous understanding of what the community needs. As far as education I, and experience also, I was in the business world, I was in the banking world, and I also studied on Beacon Hill to understand about open meetings, about uh, organ uh, who decides what, and how uh, we need to address our budgets, how we need to research, and that's, I believe, a strong part of what we need to continue doing is researching. See what's working somewhere else that can compare to what's working here. And I've been a part of that, attending meetings throughout the state, actually, for over 10 years now, and attending meetings within the city, whether it's the Downtown Broughton Association, uh, OCPC, which is Old Colony Planning Council, and learning and understanding the components that are the most advantageous to the community. And uh, again, I'm always available for people to discuss these things more openly with me because they're involved. Thank you. Okay, um, first question is the City Council under a Plan B form of government is uh, officially known as Strong Council Weak Mayor. That's our plan form of government. Um, at budget time, 
the mayor submits a budget with his priorities or if it's a female mayor, her priorities, we've had both. Um, how would you determine um, that the council can only cut the budget, they cannot add to the budget. How would you act as a city councilor? You're both new, uh, seeking the office. I'll start with uh, Ann on that one. Okay, well first of all, some new things about working together. I mean, I agree that that's a really positive way to get something accomplished. Having worked over the years with uh, several mayors and their team, and I believe that team is what makes, truly makes up the success of a mayor. So when you talk about working together and the budget coming at you, first of all, you need to review and research and understand the needs of the various departments. It's, it's very overwhelming and that's understandable. But if you've already worked partially with some of these departments, whether it be, I'm going to cite the Brockton um, Department of uh, Parks and Recreation, and you want to see their needs, then you see where maybe their budget will work one way, but other individuals working together with that department can see an accomplishment. I simply cited that department because I've worked and written grants for uh, the DW Field Park Association, for example. So I believe that I would research all of them, speak with the mayor and the department heads to understand more closely what would be the best uh, budget for them and the community. Ollie, well, you get a minute 15. Thank you. Well, you know, to talk about the budget, I think what you ha has to go hand in hand. You have to work with the mayor, you have to work with the city council, and I believe we need to go line by line. Um, you just can't say, okay, this is my budget, I'm going to approve it. You know, we have to make sure that we're not, we're not overspending, we're not underspending. We've got to make sure that every department head is held accountable. Um, do, do we need an audit this year or do, don't we need an audit? So those are, the, those are the tough questions when you're running for city council or when you're inside the chambers to ask those tough questions. So it's always about asking questions, getting to the root of the, the issue, or trying to solve problems. And I believe that I'm a, a problem solver. Okay, let's go on to the relationship. Um, the, the city council um, and the mayor didn't start off too well at the beginning of uh, this, the administration. Um, what would you do differently as an elected city councilor to ensure that there's a good relationship between the mayor and the city? I'm going to start with Ollie. Well, like I said, my personality is a little different than everybody else. What I would do differently, I would sit down with the mayor, say, hey, look, what can I do to help versus, you know, put my feet in the ground in the mud? What can I do to help? How can I move the agenda forward? What can we agree on? What, can, what are we disagreeing on? How can we meet in the middle? I think that's the most important part because it's not about me. It's not about the mayor. It's about moving the city forward. Okay. Ian, same question. Okay. First of all, we need to find out why there was a disagreement in the first place and review that. I believe, you know, certainly that you're trying to compromise. It isn't about you, the city councilor. It is about what's best for the community. And sometimes both indiv indiv individually, the mayor and the city councilors as a group or individually themselves believe that they're seeking what's best for everyone involved. So I believe, first of all, we look at why they're disagreeing in the first place. And myself, for example, I do remember that there was some change in how many individuals were part of the current mayor's team versus the previous may mayor's team. So we'd find out and substantiate why are these individuals needed. I mean, we can cite all the time where people change and businesses or what have you, they hire more individuals or they lay off because demand is at a different place or a, a form of equipment replaces an individual partially. So citing that for an example, that would be what I'd look at so that you could reach some form of agreement. But what I believe in all these that we discuss here, and we can say all this we want, is letting individuals know bringing out the information so people can draw the conclusions themselves and feel that they're supported. Okay, um, let's talk about some of the issues of the day, some issues that have been going back uh, quite, a, quite a long time. Um, let's start with public safety. Public safety is police department, fire department, emergency management, let's say, um, but the one that's the most prevalent right now is the crime issue, yeah. okay? Um, what are your priorities and objectives as a city councilor when it comes to public safety? I'll start with Ian. 
Okay, well, first of all, being a you know, member of the community as a city councilor, you're automatically seeing what's transpiring yourself. I mean, I am one of these individuals that's been out and about for an awful long time now. I walk through the city, and I believe the more you walk through the city, the more you see what's transpiring. I believe there is a crime rate that's distressing. How do we change that? I believe you meet one-on-one -on -one with the individuals that are hired to address the crime issue, whether they're police officers, district attorney's office, and you begin to ask what's working in another community versus this community. And then you try to find solutions. I've been part of these crime watches uh, brought to Neighbors United many years back in all the projects that we were involved with. I remember the rallies, the marches, and addressing the concerns and coming through with proposals and ideas that can work in other communities and how they can apply to working in themselves. But the most important thing is to understand that the constituent feels safe and to continue to reinforce how we can re make them feel safer and more comfortable with their, um, the situation in the city at present. Okay, uh, minute, minute 15, Ollie, and I'm going to have to ask going forward, we stick to the time cues. Yeah. Ollie. Okay. Well, you know, um, it's definitely, it's, it's a complicated, um, a compl it's, it's complicated, but I say the way, the way to fix it, if, if I was in charge, it would be about communications, you know, working with the police department, working with the citizens, because if, if, if you got the police going in one direction, the citizens going in a different direction, and we're not coming in together to try to combat some of the, the issues in, in, in our own community, it's not, it's not going to be fixed, like we see right now with the shootings and the drug dealings and things like that. But if you have the police working with the neighbors, communicating with the neighbors, um, talking with the neighbors, getting out their cars, letting the, letting the neighbors know firsthand, hello, I'm Officer Jones, I'm Officer Smith. Um, if you have a problem, here, here's my business card, give me a call, you know, this is my area, this is the area I work. So it's about open communication, working together as a whole to combat the crime. Okay, I'm going to stick with crime for a minute. Um, over the course of time, and you folks have both been here long enough to know that there was a very vibrant and very active crime watch in the city that over the years has kind of dwindled. Um, is there anything you would do to revive it as a city councilor? Um, and would that include um, within, your, within your ward meetings in the ward? I'll start with Ollie first. Well, Mark, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not even city councilor yet. I'm already doing that. I'm working with groups. We're building a crime watch around in my neighborhood where we had a shooting um, about a month or two ago. We're working with, um, I'm working with the neighbors over at the East um, Tabor Ave area. So I'm already doing, I'm not even the city council yet. So I'm already in the trenches working with my neighbors and trying to have a better, I'm trying to reach a goal and have a better Brockton, a safer Brockton. So it's already being done. Okay, Ann? Well, we talk about Crime Watch, and I agree with Crime Watch, but I'm also realistic. Individuals' times is, are limited, and I believe that the more visibility we have of police officers. I'm downtown five and six days a week, and I see the challenges faced by businesses, nonprofits, and residents. And what we're not seeing enough is, is enough interaction. And I notice that even uh, what I'm, I encourage people that wish to take part in various uh, organizations that work with auxiliary police. And I believe we've never looked at that in our community. Maybe this is something because we're so short-staffed, and that's been a challenge. I realize more people are coming down the pike, you know, new, new offices, and we're, we're grateful for that. But that's what I'd like to see more of. And again, opportunities where people could go from their cell phones or online or what have you and make a call to turn around and say, I see something of concern, driver's license number or something like that, you know, plate number, and be able to follow up with it. Because I believe people are responsible, but they're not the only ones, and they don't have all the time. They're, they're residents first. Okay, let's go into some more issues of the day, and uh, if you, in all likelihood, um, we're, we're in October, we're heading towards November, and there's a proposal on the table from the mayor to buy the desalinization plant. First, I want a, a yes or a no answer, and then a little bit more explanation. Start with Ann. 
Uh, no. Okay. Explain. Uh, why? Well, at first I thought, this is a great idea. But if, I don't like this way this contract has been transpiring with the desal plant to begin with. So before you jump the gun, as the expression goes, let's look more closely at the contract and let's make a decision on that. Maybe this is something that should go forth and be a ballot question for the, com for the citizens because they would be the ones holding the bill. So uh, on, on the face of it, I have to say, no, I'm sorry. Let's look at this more closely. Okay. Ollie, same question. Um, I'm going to say yes, but I want to put um, some asterisks next to it. Um, when I say yes, it has to, the numbers have to make sense. You know, I'm a numbers guy. I do mortgages. So if, if we buy it at X number of dollars, do the numbers make sense? You know, are we getting that fair market pro, uh, value? Are we getting the best, we're getting the best deal? So if we get the best deal, yes, I'm for it. If no, we're not getting the best deal, no, I'm not for it. Okay. But definitely look at the contracts see if we can get out of it. Okay. Um, let's go to the big issue that has been going on here forever. Um, uh, I know last week there was a planning board meeting. Ollie, you remember the planning board, um, and the decision was deferred dealing with the power plant. Uh, I'm not sure what you can or can't say right, right. with the litigation that's out there, but um, residents always ask the question, what's your position on the power yeah. plant? Can you, can you state that? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tread lightly on this, um, but what I would say is, yeah, let me try lightly on this because I'm on the planning board and we do have a meeting next December first. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna plead the fifth on this one for right now. But you can go to my website and you can look at my position. Okay, Ann. Okay, I am vehemently opposed to the power plant for many reasons, and I have been with Stop the Power since its inception. Why? Several reasons. First of all, the health issue. Second of all, the lack of safety around the, the uh, power plant itself. Third, the company that is dealing with, with the community, it's questionable, uh, how would I say it, uh, pr procedures in trying to apply to become, uh, you know, to exist here in this community. I have been at the meetings in Boston with the you know, on the environmental issue because that is of extreme concern. I have stood with the Stop the Power individuals and I would continue to do so because what was promised to us, oh, that this was going to bring revenue to the community and then it was going to bring jobs, that keeps on shrinking. And my, my, the most concern I have, once again, is the health issue. We already have individuals with health concerns, respiratory issues, and that would only exacerbate it. Uh, no, you can, you can honestly... I stand no against the power plant. Okay, um, let's talk about, um, I know the public had a right to vote on this. Um, what, what was your position or, or is your position in terms of the casino and how it would or wouldn't mesh with the city? And first. Okay, I'm vehemently opposed to the casino also. No, I'm for great businesses coming to Broughton. I repeat, great businesses. Not businesses that are in trouble in two states, and already have had problems here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I don't believe a casino should be across the street from a high school, around the block from a middle school, and down the street from an elementary school. We already know from research that casinos are not bringing in the revenue they did in the 80s and 90s. Why get on board with something that's not going to bring more revenue into the community? And it's, I've been attending the meeting since the uh, inception of this idea in opposition, but I went to get information. One of the things that was very startling, and we talked about crime briefly, and that was how that there's more drugs and violence when there's casinos in a community. And I was shocked to find out that this was a wonderful place to distribute your drugs. So if you have 10 kilos of heroin, you can bring it in your pocketbook and drop it by and someone else can take the kilos out. And I thought, this is also another reason why I don't want the casino. And I was out there holding the sign against the casino and I've got the, uh, the thumbs up and the thumbs down and I've got the hands off here. <laughs> Ollie, 150. Oh, man, that was funny. Um, 
I'm, <laughs> I'm for the casino. I don't know about the kilos. Though. I'm not for, not for bringing 10 kilos to the casino, but um, I'm definitely for the casino. I think the city needs a revenue. Um, the thing about the casino, you're a doubt. You can either go there or you don't have to go there. Nobody's twisting your arm. Um, with the you know with the ten million dollars coming to the city you know with, with public safety um, infrastructure uh, let's bring it in uh, I think it's, I think it's a great a great deal for the business uh, for the for the business tax uh, for the revenue for our city tax revenue um, the only thing is next to the high school yeah, I have you know it's, I have a little a little issue with that but they're gonna have the way they they present it it's gonna be um, the facade is gonna be so um, so um, high in the in the um, what's the word I'm looking for the facade's going to block it from the high school where they can't see it. But I'm definitely 100 percent for the casino. Bring it in. Let's go. Give me the shovel. I'll dig it up. Okay. Let's go to um, let's fast forward. It's uh, January, I believe it's fourth this year. You're already sworn in as a city councilor. Okay. And I'm going to ask the same question to you, so I'm not going to tip the scales either way. Um, your vote on a 30% water or sewer increase, Ollie? Um, no. And why? Right now, homeowners are struggling. <laughs> People can't pay their mortgage right now, so and, and, you know that could be a tip of scale. Somebody could lose their house, so I'm going to say no. I'm going to defer um, raising taxes for right now. If, if I could, if, I, if that was my position. Okay, Ann. Okay, no, I don't want to see the water rates go up either. And again, why aren't we looking at ways to curb increases? Yes, we need to replace pipes. But this is where I feel that we need to look at what other communities are doing because we're not the only community that needs to replace pipes in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And that's where I believe we don't research enough where other communities are succeeding and not continually increasing both taxes, water rates. Yes, the water rates has been something, you know, this is uh, recent because they had not raised them in some time. But again, I just believe that we need to spend a little more time on analyzing this. No, I am not for making living in Brockton more of a financial burden than it needs to be. Massachusetts is an expensive state to live in. And we have our challenges, regardless of who are retired or raising families or just starting out. So that, that I just believe that it would be foolish to do that and begin to look at other alternatives. Okay, let's uh, I'll flip this again and I'll start with Ann on this one. Your number one idea for economic development in Ward 5 specifically. We're not talking downtown, Campello, Montello, or citywide. We're talking about your ward. What would you do to bring in business or economic development in Ward 5? Well, let's, let's remember, and Ward 5 already has um, the one of the largest nonprofits in the city, Broughton Hospital, which is Signature Broughton Hospital, which is a tremendous asset to the community, both life-saving and otherwise. So to me, uh, first of all, this is, how would I say it, for a business education, because education is always going to be a foundation for anything. And I want to work, and I've already been speaking with President Wall and several other legislatures, legislators, excuse me, about finding out about getting the addition that's supposed to be part of Massasoit Community College built. Now, another thing that I'd like to look at is what the community seems to need in Ward 5. It's, it's a great deal of its residential, but we still have a lot of medical activity with the hospital. So to me, it would be visiting what would be best. I find that some of the, we're calling them strip malls, are charging rather very high rent prices. I want to know why, and is this to their advantage in our city, or is this a detriment to our community? So that was something else I'd look at more closely, because I see that in certain areas that, um, how would I say it, the storefronts are being filled faster than on the east side, and that's what I want to look at. Ollie? Well, we have, a great, we have two great assets. We have um, the Massachusetts Community College, where I would love to help build build around Massachusetts Community College. I know we're still wor working on the stone building to be built, but it's a pad right behind um, Sure Speedy that we could put a Panera Bread. Um, you know, I could talk with investors, um, try to build up that area where um, the the Dollar Tree is, and where they just put the new um, Chinese buffet. So it's it's all about trying to build more, bring more businesses in, um, and also with the downtown, try to bring more. You know, like three, four star 
um, restaurants in there where um, we could have some type of nightlife downtown. Um, so I would definitely work with you know some of the building owners and and some of uh, um, Gary Keith, the Main Street manager, and, and bringing um, some successful businesses um, in Brockton and Ward Five downtown and um, by over by the Massasoit Community College area. Okay, we're going to go right to closing statements at this point. Um, we reverse the order, and Ollie is first. Thank One you. minute. Again, you know, I'd like to thank Mark and BCA, and I'd like to thank everybody watching at home. Uh, like I said, my name is Ollie Spears, and I'm asking for your vote for November 3rd. I've been doing the work already. Um, I believe I'd be a great city councilor. Like I said this before, people like Ann, but Brockton loves Ollie. Um, and like I said, right now, I'm first vice chair on the Democratic City Committee. I'm on the planning board. I'm on the traffic commission. Um, I'm working with, with neighbors all the time. I'm getting phone calls. So people already think that I'm your city council. So just vote me in and I'll be ready. I'll hit the ground running. Thank you so much. I love Brockton. Okay, Ann. Okay, I'm Ann Borgat, 508-584-6919 and tranquilitytreasure at yahoo.com. I've been getting those phone calls. You don't know how, for how long. I mean, at 6 in the morning at 11 o'clock at night. I'm ready to help individuals. I have and I will continue to do so. I'm not going to stop and I never have. And one of the things that I was surprised Martin asked us was about the roads. Can I just say all the streets I went down and knocked on doors, that was one of the largest complaints after crime. And uh, that's something I'd like to uh, look into further. I've been talking to old planning Old Colony Planning Council, I'm so used to saying OCPC, but for many people they don't realize that that's what it stands for. And what they're doing, they're already working on a Route 28, which is the Montello section that kind of stops uh, Ward 5, and looking at what they can do for traffic um, improvement, repair, road repair, and I'm dealing with them right now on that. I've been serving on boards over the years. I've been participating in the community. I'm proud to be a member of Broughton Interfaith Community, and we stood out opposed to the casino. And I'm concerned about several other situations, and I'm getting the hand wave. So everyone, thank you. Please get out there on November 3rd. And um, yes, thank everybody at BCA that's here working on Columbus Day instead of enjoying a 75 degree day. Okay, well, thank you both. Uh, we got a lot in for 30 minutes. We certainly could go for another 30 yes, minutes, but I got a few other council races yes, to go. Yes, so, um, you, 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 you're watching Brockton Community Access's coverage of election 2015, the Ward 5 City Council race. Make sure you educate yourself about both the candidates. Go check out their websites and their campaign literature. And, but most of all, on November 3rd, please go out and vote. Thanks for joining us.